Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ahlubayt TV. Um, Sister, if you could just say your name and where you're from. Okay, I'm calling from London. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you a question, Chef. Inshallah, tafadhal. Okay, Assalamu alaikum, Chef. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sister. I want to ask a question regarding um, the fifth Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq. Alayhi salam. Alayhi salatu salam. Um, Imam Jafar Sadiq used to live uh, uh, at the time of uh, Abu Hanifa, the Sunni scholar, yes? Um, I want to ask if uh, if the Imam told Abu Hanifa that he is the Imam of the time and he has to follow him. No doubt, yes. Did he tell Abu Hanifa that he is the Imam of the, of the time? Of course, Imam Ali Salam. Yeah. He was the Imam of the time, and Abu Hanifa, of course, knew that it is matter which is not hidden. It was never hidden to. Everyone in his time knew that Imam Jafar al-Sadiq was the Imam of his time. Not only Abu Hanifa, but even Abu Jafar al-Mansur, the tyrant ruler. And everyone knew that Imam Jafar al-Sadiq was the Imam of the time. And also Abu Hanifa knew that he is the most knowledgeable human being on earth that time. And he admitted that, Abu Hanifa admitted that no one on this earth is more knowledgeable than Ja'far ibn Muhammad al-Sadiq. So that was a very clear fact known to Abu Hanifa and others as well. Okay, can I ask another question? Yes, please. Can I ask another question? Yes, yes please. Sister. Um, the question, hello? Yes, please, go ahead. My question is, I'm not from the follower of Alan Big Sect, and I'm doing, I'm, I'm not, I didn't finish my research yet, but I believe in the 12 Imams, uh, that the, the Alan Bayt are the true successor of the Holy Prophet, um, am I considered to be a Shia, or I am like, do I have to be um, following them, in a way like in Salah and other rituals? So you are now still researching? Yeah, I'm still researching. I didn't finish my research. Yeah. Okay, you are researching the Why? real Islam, the Islam of the Prophet. Okay, did you reach to any evidences that the real successors of the Prophet are yes. the I've, 12 I Imams of Ahlul Bayt? Yes, I believe Imamat Imam is by... Uh, by Allah is the one who chose, not by election or at, like some people say now. I believe it's uh, it's uh, Allah's decision to choose who's gonna be the mom. Okay, that is a very very important point. Okay. I believe in that, but just I'm wondering, am I considered to be from the follower of Al Bayt or no? Or I have to be, I have, I have to finish my research and then start um, practicing. If you believe that the succession of the Prophet is from Allah and not from people. So yeah. that is a very important step in reaching the truth. Because yeah. the reality of Islam is this, that as the prophethood is from Allah and it is not by election, the succession of the prophethood is also from Allah. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the glorious, has always appointed the successors of all the previous prophets. And we don't have one prophet at all that he left his succession in the hands of the people. It is exactly with the last and greatest prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny. So the succession after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his progeny, is from Allah. And the Prophet has mentioned that the leaders of Islam and Muslims after me will be 12. And I invite you to go through Bukhari, Muslim, and other main books of Hadith to search about Ithna Ashar. Ithna Ashar, you will find hundreds of Hadiths 
that the leaders of Islam, the real leaders of Islam, are 12. You find them, and if you want me, I can also show you some of the hadiths here in my small laptop with me. So you are, inshallah, in the, I mean, the right direction, but you need to follow the teachings of the Prophet as soon as you can. I mean, I, I, don't, uh, I don't find any reason why don't you follow the teaching of a Prophet through his successors, who are the 12 Imams of Ahlul Bayt, and the 12 Imams of Ahlul Bayt, they don't say anything but only and exactly what the Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, said. So you follow the Prophet by following the teachings of the 12 Imams. Okay, thank you very much. Jazakumullah. Thank you very you. much, sister, for that question. Inshallah, say building. Uh, partly on what the sister was saying that she obviously believes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picks those that should be in power and invested in power afterwards but on the other side of the coin because you've narrated the tradition of the of the hadith of thaqalain the two weighty things if as ha has happened in, in history the uh, the position of power is picked by the people what is the damage that it can do or has done to the uh, aim of Muslim unity. In fact, every disaster took place in the history of Muslims because of the deviation from the orders of Allah and the Prophet. Mm -hmm. This Ummah was supposed to be the Ummah everywhere because this religion was sent <coughs> not to a community in Asia or Africa only. Mm -hmm. It was sent to Linnas Kafa. In Arabic, Kafa means to all human beings. And Quran, if you read Quran, you find that Allah calls all human beings. Ya ayyuhan nas, ya ayyuhan nas. Mm -hmm. Always, more than 20 places in Quran, Allah gives the main teachings not to the believers. You know, if you go through the Quranic verses, mm -hmm. You will find the main teachings are directed to whom? To the all human beings. Means this book is addressing all human beings. Where are the majority of human beings today? Are they Muslims? Hmm. No. It, which means that this message is not yet conveyed to the addresses mm -hmm. Allah addressed Allah addressed all human beings yes. but the message don't reach to majority of human beings yet mm -hmm. just because of the deviation from the order of Allah a leadership took over politically and that corruption in the leadership led to disasters right from beginning till today mm -hmm. and unless and until Muslims go back to the real leadership of Islam they cannot convey the message to the world Sayyid, I believe we have a, another caller uh, Assalamu Alaikum my name is Muhammad Hassan I'm calling from London I wanted to ask a couple of questions uh, one was, you know, whenever I'm feeling, you know, I, I always say, Ya Ali Adrikni, Ya Hussein Adrikni, yes. Ya Maulati, Ya Fatima Adrikni. And I ask them for my desires, for what they should do for me, like give Shafa and all that, yeah. And even when I go on Ziyarat to Bibi Zainab, yes. when I tell the Zari, I say, Ya Bibi Zainab, you know, uh, let my guna be maf and all that, you know. Now, the thing is, when I ask them, I am asking them because I think they have the power to give it to me because although they are dead, but according to me, they are still alive because that is what I have heard. So is it right to ask them or give or ask a line, give their vasta? You know, this is, I'm very confused about this situation. Okay. 
the fact that they are alive is a reality. They are alive. Because Allah, the glorious, grants everlasting life to the most pious servants. As we read in Quran, that don't say to those who are killed in the way of Allah as dead. Nay, they are alive, but you don't realize. If the people who are killed in the way of Allah are alive always, so those who are higher in degree should be better than them in situation. So all the most pious servants of Allah are alive. But what type of life? Allah knows. And the best evidence of that, that every human, every Muslim who performs salah, he should say, whatever he is or she is, should say, Assalamu alayka ayyuha nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Salam on you, O Prophet. What is the point on saying salam on a dead person mm -hmm. if he is not alive? There is a sort of life which Allah knows, but they are definitely alive and they, Allah gives them the ability to listen to us and to respond even to us. Number two, when you seek help from the most humble servants of Allah, you are in fact seeking help from Allah because these servants of Allah, they don't do anything but only what Allah wants. And we seek help from them, we seek intercession their shafa'ah. And this shafa'ah is mentioned in Quran. And we know in our hearts that Allah is the giver. But we say, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Ali, Ya Hussein, being the best and most beloved servants of Allah, that their intercession will be accepted by Allah. And then we will get our wishes fulfilled. No one believes that, that Rasulullah can do something that Allah does not approve. No. Or Imam Ali can do something without the permission of Allah. No. Allah is the first and the last. The decision is in the hands of Allah. Lillahi al-amru min qablu min ba'd. Lillahi al means the order is Allah's order. But we seek the shafa'ah, the intercession, the wasila. Wabtahu ilayhi al-wasila. Wasila means take this mean for getting the blessings from Allah. Because of the blessings showered from him on his most beloved servants, the Prophet and his holy progeny, and the sincere servants of Allah. So when you seek help, it is Tawheed. It is not Shirk at all. Unless someone believes that it has nothing to do with Allah, that is completely wrong. We believe that it is first and last from Allah. I believe we've got another caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum. I think there might be a slight. Yes, please. So, we were talking about how Ahlul Bayt are the crucial factor in the unity of Muslim Ummah. Yes. And what happens if people go away from this leadership? Mm -hmm. The result is being seen and witnessed. Look at the bloodshed which took place among Muslims just immediately after the Prophet.